All right, a video on how to really understand what this means, right? This whole idea of reduced row echelon form. <clears throat> and we're going to attempt to get this 3x3 three three into a reduced row echelon. And before, I guess before we do that, let's take a look at some other ones to see, to kind of get an idea of what reduced row echelon means and uh, what are some examples of it. And counter examples, examples that actually aren't in reduced row echelon. So this example right here, it asks, which of the following matrices are in reduced row echelon form? So let's go through these one at a time and decide whether they are or aren't in reduced row echelon. Letter A, we have a four by four matrix. Actually, all of these are four by four. And if we do some examination here, remember our reduced row echelon form tells us that the leading non-zero entries of every single row must be a one, must be ones, and in this case they are. So this is our pivot, this is our pivot, and this is our pivot. Column two doesn't have a pivot, which is fine, that's okay. <clears throat> but reduced row echelon form also requires that every one, every leading one must have all zeros above it. So that's really where letter A fails. Letter A is not in reduced row echelon form. Letter B. Again, we have leading entries of, of one, which is good. And they're kind of going down in a nice little staircase pattern, which is also good. Notice that column two does not have a, have a pivot at all, which is fine. There, well, this is another thing worth mentioning. The, the all zero rows are in the bottom, which is good. But again, this fails because there is a five above the one. So that is not in reduced row echelon form. That would just be regular row echelon form. Letter C. Again, letter C fails. Looks like it fails right here because the all zero row, the zero row is not at the bottom. It has to be. And it also fails right here where there is a, a leading one in the row in row four and there's one above it in row one as well. So column four fails right there. So that's not, that's not correct. Letter D. Let's see, we have a leading entry of one. We have no pivot in column two. We have a leading entry of one in column three. Nothing above it. Well, I shouldn't say nothing, but there's a zero above it. And there's no pivot in column D, which is fine. We have two zero rows at the bottom. So letter D is in reduced row echelon form. And letter E fails because the zero rows are not at the bottom. They need to be below this row right here. So that's not reduced row echelon. All right, so hopefully that helps you a little bit. Back up to our example here. We're gonna take a look at how to get this into reduced row echelon. Most reduced row echelon three by threes are the identity, but you know sometimes they're not. Sometimes they, uh, you know, they can look a little different uh, as we kind of look down here, right? Sometimes row, sometimes columns don't have to have a leading entry of of one. In other words, our staircase pattern doesn't have to go like this perfectly. It could kind of go like this, and that's okay. So let's take a look at this and we'll see if we can get this into the correct format. All right, so let's take a look at this guy right here. He needs to become a zero. So I'm gonna simply add row one and two together. So I'm gonna go row two plus row one. And I'm gonna rewrite row one. No, that's not true. I'm actually gonna take that and bump it down a little bit. And we're gonna add row one to row two, sorry about that. So that's a zero, that's a five, and that is a negative three. All I'm doing there is I'm adding row one to row two. So one plus negative one, four plus one, negative two plus negative one, great. Rewrite the other rows. When you get really good at this, you'll be able to do multiple operations at the same time. 
put a nice little space in between here. There we go. A little bit more. Alright. Moving on. Trying to turn our 3x3 three three into reduced row echelons. So we want to next take a look at this entry down here. That needs to become a zero. So I'm going to use one of my other row operations that says, all right, take, take a row, multiply it by something, and add it to my current row. So row one times negative three. So that's going to be one times negative three plus three. So that's where I get the zero from. Four times negative three plus zero will give me negative 12. Negative three times six, excuse me, negative two times negative three is positive six, plus one is seven. So I'll go ahead and rewrite the other rows. So I have one, four, negative two, zero, five, negative three, okay? And let's see, we want, uh, you know, a lot of times we have options, right? We have different sort of crossroads to go to. And well let's try to get let's try to get this to be a positive one. Alright, so I need to multiply. I need to look for like a negative six plus seven is one. Negative six plus seven. Is there anywhere that I can get that negative six from either of these two? Well, absolutely. We can we have choices, right? We can do uh, two times row two. Let's do that. Let's do two times row two plus this row, row three. So we're gonna go zero times zero, or excuse me, zero times two plus zero. This is negative two because it's two times five is 10 minus 12. This is positive one, which is the whole point. And rewrite the rest. All right, moving along here. I've got, let's see, I wanna get this to be a zero, this to be a one, this to be a zero, zero, and zero. So I have really, looks like five more steps. All right, so let's go. Let's go and multiply. All right, let's get this right here to be a one. So I need to think about what I can add to that to make it a one. Well, I can add negative four to that to make it a one. So let's multiply row three times two and add it to row two. So it's zero times two plus zero. It's negative two times two plus five. That's gonna be positive one. It's negative two, it's positive two rather, times one plus negative three. And that'll be, let's see, two minus three, it's negative one. And rewrite the rest. All right, we're getting a little bit closer here. Next, let's take a look at this entry. Try to get that to be a zero. So I want to add it to add it with positive two. So let's go ahead and multiply row two by two and add it to row three. So that's a zero. That's a zero. And negative two, positive two times negative one is negative two plus one. Rewrite the rest. Move that back up. All right, moving on here. We're getting close to about 10 minutes. We have, looks like three more steps or so. And let's go with, uh, well, I would definitely want to, I want to take, I want to make this a zero right here. So he needs to be a zero, so I need to find a positive one somewhere in that column. Well, I can easily turn this negative one into a positive one by just 
multiplying it by negative 1. So negative 1 times r3 plus row 2, 0, 0, and that's not right, 0, 1, 0. Rewrite the rest. As you can see, this kind of takes a long time, but the more you practice, the better you'll be for sure. All right, we want to, let's see, get rid of, uh, we want to get rid of this thing, make that a zero. So I'm looking for a positive two somewhere. And I can multiply the bottom row by negative two. So negative two times R3 plus R1. That's a, that doesn't change, that's a one, that's a four, that's a zero. The other rows don't change. So hopefully you're seeing, seeing some improvement in your skills here. You can move a little bit faster like I am. And let's see, it looks like two more things to do actually, two more steps. So let's go ahead and get rid of the four first. He needs to become a zero, so I need a negative four somewhere in that column. So I'll just multiply r2 by negative 4 and add it to r1. Negative 4 times r2 plus r1. And we are just about finished here. So this answer will be in reduced row echelon form. And let's see, all we need to do is really negate or change the bottom row by, multiply it by negative one. That's all. So one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. All, right, all we did there was take negative one times itself, negative one times this whole row. So that's it. All right, if we kind of zoom out a little bit here and, and get a better look at, at what we did, how many steps it took, uh, let's see, let's count them here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps to get a simple little three by three into reduced row echelon. So, you know, that's... Uh, it's pretty tricky. I mean, if you want, if the if the problem asked you simply for regular echelon, you could have actually stopped. You could have taken this matrix and simply done one quick thing to it and multiplied that by negative one. That would have turned that matrix into just regular regular row echelon or or just row echelon. All right, hope that helped.